over the last few weeks, we've seen Caesar Williams obviously make some some big plays. But where have you seen him grow the most in terms of his technique or what he does to not give receiver separation? I think throughout the course of his career, it was just learning like how to play with his length, right? You no, know, understanding who you are as a player. Um, you already said length, foot quickness, right? Physicality, all that stuff comes into play with these corners. It's such a a technical game, and I, I think right now you're seeing it all come together for him, just trusting who he is, right, what his technique, how his eyes work, um, where that leads him. And uh, it's it's awesome when you see players start to get the production, especially back-to-back weeks. Um, you got to learn how to keep his helmet on. Unfortunately, he didn't, he didn't know that wasn't a penalty um, somehow, but yeah, we'll get him We'll get him right. Um, on topic of another cornerback, Dean Ingram, um, Talk to, to Fan and Caesar after the game about playing that nickel spot, and, and Fan talked about how difficult that can be, especially when you're young. What have you seen from Dean, re- Dean recently? Because um, he's had a couple of big plays the last two weeks. Yeah, I think Dean probably has bad had back-to-back his his best weeks, most consistent weeks. And um, once again, you're seeing a guy get rewarded with a little production, right? Get a PBU, get an interception, first career interception, right? Um, always great when those go together. That's not always the case, right? Sometimes can kind of guys can quietly play really well and, and elevate their game, um, but when when that comes with a little production as well, you get a little get a little hype out of it. Um, but it, just excited, you know. I think he's learned to settle down a little bit. He's a very emotional guy. He's very passionate about the game. Um, I think you're seeing him get more comfortable and just kind of settle into that role and, and really detail it up and. He's putting in a lot of time to, to learn it and the consistency showing up on the tape. Jim, it seems like whenever Hunter Wooler gets an opportunity in a game, he makes a play, had a sack on Saturday. You obviously knew how talented he was in the recruiting process, but what has he shown you in these few months since he's been on campus? Yeah, he's, he's proven to be pretty good. Um, it's, it's fun when you, when you get young guys and you just see them kind of figure it out. Um, we make a lot of adjustments, right? We tweak our game plan week in and week out. That's why we've been consistent as a defense. And um, it takes a little while for a young guy to realize like what carries over, right? What is brand new week in and week out. And and I think it was a, probably just over a little over a month ago where you just saw, like, I get it, right? I don't have to overthink this. I understand the adjustments, uh, just playing fast, playing confident um, day in and day out in practice, starting earlier, right? Like the beginning of the year, you see those guys where it gets to Friday and it's kind of like, okay, I get this one. And then the next week, there's that learning process and they get to the end of the week and they feel comfortable. Um, But all of a sudden, the last month or so, you, you, you notice that comfort level showing up on Tuesday. Right, and then you install third down and red zone, and, and you see that first day that you rep it, the comfort levels there, and they're doing little things. Um, and that that to me was a big step for him, and uh, obviously the last couple of weeks you, you've got to see him get on the field, and you see the physicality, the play speed, um, just the the confidence to go make a play. Um, he's going to be a really good player, I think, in this program, and um, it's great for him to get some production and, and get some time right now. Jim, for, forget about the stats, the numbers that your defense is putting up this year. How would you just describe the way they play, their mentality and also their physicalness? Just if someone were to ask you to describe this defense. Um, I, I think the thing I, I love about this group right now is is I think they're really challenging each other to to set the standard, right? To be that guy, right? Whether it's Leo, Jack, Herbie, Scott, Colin, like the the corners, right? You look at all those guys, I think they're trying to be the standard for the group uh, with their consistency, um, with the production. um, And and I think they're just feeding off of each other right now. It's a very confident group. Um, We're able to get to the sideline and communicate. Um, For the most part, the coaches don't even have to be the first voice, right? Okay, this is the adjustment that needs to happen. This is what we're thinking going into this next series. But as far as the level of play, right, and, and the consistency, the the standard of, of what they expect on the field, that first series wasn't it. We played a 19-play drive um, and really were on our heels and, and made mistakes we haven't made all season. Um, and you get to the sideline, and it was kind of handled before we got over there. And obviously, when you get a turnover and end it with no points, everyone kind of takes a deep breath. But um, there's just certain things as a coach you, you love to see your ta- players take ownership. And, and I think we have that in a big way, 
you know, with a lot of guys, even go far, far down the depth chart with that second group that's got a lot of snaps the last two weeks, you're seeing leaders emerge already and kind of taking control of that group, um, which is really exciting. Jim, it's almost unheard of for a team to make household staff changes within a season, and it's also pretty rare to be facing a team this late in the season coming off a bye. And it's not like they're going to reinvent the wheel, but do, are you expecting differences or wrinkles uh, from Nebraska this week? Yeah, I'm, it's kind of hard to say exactly what to expect. You know, These guys are very multiple in how they attack um, schematically. They do a ton of different things. You know, Are they going to go – Go, go for broke and and do more. I, I don't I don't know if I see them doing more. They've they've already put so much on tape and different things. Um, you know they they move the ball on pretty much everyone they played right pretty consistently. Um, they've struggled at times in, on third down. They've struggled struggled at times in the red zone. But you you kind of look twenty to twenty and, and that ball is moving pretty well. Um, it's a big test for us. We know we know this group. You know the quarterback's been there and and played extremely well against us. A, lot, a number of times, so um, it's a big challenge for this defense. You know, I, I like the way we're playing, and you, know, you think of when we played them in 2019 to now. I feel like we've we've added different elements to our defense that we didn't have and we needed back then. Um, doesn't mean success this year, but but I like um, what we're able to do from a scheme standpoint a little bit better than we've done in the past against them. In that respect, I don't know if you've been through a situation like this, but do you prepare for a game any differently after those types of staff changes? Do you look at film any more or less than you would otherwise when you're scouting, or how do you kind of deal? How do you kind of get ready in that regard? Yeah, I, I think you know what you have to do is prepare them a little bit for the unknown, right? Adjustments in and how to handle you know, some situations that that you haven't seen. Um, you look back to Northwestern, there were multiple runs, schemes on that first drive. We They hadn't done, right? So it's not uncommon that you see that week in and week out. Um, I think you're just getting the guys to understand, like, there is an element of learning within a game when there is unknown going in. And, and our guys have handled that pretty well. Um, I feel like we do a great job of making adjustments, um, whether it's within a drive, in between series, halftime. Um, just getting our guys to understand how you're getting attacked, right? What is the philosophy of the day, not necessarily the exact play? And uh, I think that as a coordinator, you're searching a little bit more broad maybe than in a normal situation. But like you said, this this late into a season, you kind of go, how, how much can they really add? You know, where, where are they going to go? Are they going to just try to tighten it up a little bit and play with a little more consistency? Or is all hell going to break loose and, and they're going to be all over the place. You know, there's an element of that in what they do already. Um, so they make you play discipline. They do a great job of kind of cutting your defense in half and eliminating people from flowing to the football. So they do a great job of creating space in their scheme, and that's been consistent for a long time. Jim, we've heard from the players last month or so this do it again mentality that kind of started with you in, in training camp. Did you expect them to kind of embrace it like they have? And how have you seen that kind of come up in the last few weeks? I'm not taking that credit. I don't know where that came from. Um, no, I, I think it's a, it's an awesome mentality for our guys to have, right? Just don't don't worry about the noise, the hype, good or bad, and, and just go out there and execute again and, and get better. I think we Leo took it to a new level today. He's like, do it again, do it better. Right, that's the mentality of that's kind of can you top what you did the previous week um, and just continue to build and, and grow confidence from from what you're doing. I think our guys have figured out the magic is is going in putting an honest week's work and and that is what's going to allow you to play confidently and play fast. And it's fun to see a team kind of figure that out and block out everything else and and not get in their feelings and just continue to to push forward and, and find ways to get better. And during camp, there were a lot of days when we were in there that Torchio always seemed to be around the ball. I'm just curious. I know he's helping you right now. But what kind of player has he become? And, and what's the ceiling for this kid the more you have to lean on him maybe next year? Yeah, he's always had a knack for the football. Um, he, he has very good vision. Right When he has the ability to read a quarterback, um, when he knows he's in a position where a quarterback's looking at him, right, he does a very good job of kind of telling that story and, and opening a window, right, open a throwing window early and then showing up on time. Um, good understanding of the scheme that way and physical. 
um, you know, consistently puts his pads on people in, in the run game. And um, it's, it's fun to watch. He has a ton of confidence in his ability and um, he's got very good timing, right? Eyes and timing is, is a huge element to what a safety has to do. And um, it's great to see him continue, right? Week in and week out, it's kind of making impact plays for us. Uh, adds great depth in rotation. We're able to, to rotate those safeties pretty, pretty good right now. And uh, not only stay right at that same level, but really add different elements to, to what that group is good at. So um, it's a fun, fun group of safeties right now that I'm rolling through, you know, really going five deep, you know, the last couple of weeks with, with Trey Blaylock making plays and, and Hunter making plays. I have great confidence really in that, in that entire group right now.